Father, we thank you that you've been bringing nations to this mountain. You're bringing the nations. You're bringing the nations. We love the nations. We love the nations, Father. Your heart is the nation. Father God, we count it a privilege and an honor that you brought all the way, literally across the world, two apostolic generals carrying mighty mantles of authority from the Philippines. Lord, our hearts have been tilled in this service. Our hearts have been prepared in this service to receive the word of God that these two carry. The message from heaven for us. Lord God, we count it an honor. We make room for their giftings. We make room for who they are and we recognize who they are and we honor who they are in our midst. Lord God, we give you glory for Tessie and Lem and we welcome them in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Hallelujah! Woo! Praise you, God. All right, I want everybody to stand. And we're going to praise God for the servants that he's brought here. So let's stand and let's shout hallelujah. I want to hear it clear from here to the Philippines. And that's possible because we're live streaming. So let's shout hallelujah. you too. We bless you. Yes. Welcome to Gateway on the mountain. Hallelujah. Yes. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Yeah. My flesh is still shaking. In behalf of the Word of Life ministry in the Philippines, we call it Word of Life Sanctuary for All Nations. Amen. And we thank you so much, Pastor Dave, Pastor Adedi, for welcoming us. A warm welcome from your From your brothers and sisters in the Philippines. Yeah. Congregation, thank you for having us today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Yeah. We brought with us the sweet rain from the Philippines. Not, not, not the hurricane. Hallelujah. No. The rain of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I love your worship team here. You are awesome. 
That's why I miss also our worship team in the Philippines. And the Lord said, Now is our time. I have given my time on you so that you will realize that my time and your time is the same. Now is the time to arise. Because the Lord said, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. God has his business today. His business is to heal the sick. His business is to raise up the dead. His business is to give deliverance from those people who are demonized. His business is to give us complete freedom. And our business is to confess and to declare that the Lord is good all the time. Amen. God is good all and all the time. God is good. Yes, I know you love this word, God is good. God is good in you here in, in, in Colorado, Denver, Colorado, and God is good for us in the Philippines. Yes. Now, how many minutes you oh good good <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> now allow me to read this scripture and in first Peter chapter 1 from verse 13 beyond it says Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Huh. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, are we? As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy, the Lord says. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your endless conduct Receive a tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ. As of the Lamb. Without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained. Before the foundation of the world. But was manifest in these last times. For you, for us. That's why I said now is our time. Who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless our hearts this morning. Pastor Adelie, can I borrow your beautiful gita? Okay. You know, before my wife give or deliver the message, I love to sing. Amen. I know here in your church, everybody can sing good. <laughs> At your church, too. Yeah? Oh, Ooh. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
can I have a microphone stand? Uh, okay, I said, really? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Well, he's setting up. I want to tell on this worship team in the Philippines. They, those kids, we did conferences, crusades. We were hopping on ferries. We were going all over the place. And these worship, this worship band, carrying their instruments, and we're talking keyboards and bass players, basses, they would get on these things, what do you call them, tricycles? Tricycles, it's a, it's a motorcycle that can fit a lot of people because they put a platform on I don't know how they do it, but it's amazing. But it's little. And they put the whole team on these tricycle things, and they would travel standing up holding their instruments in, you know, 100-degree heat with humidity for an hour and a half to each location and never complained. I'm telling you, an anointing that came out of their team, the anointing that is on your team is phenomenal. It's palatable, and, and it brought Jesus down, especially that daughter of yours. She can belt out a song, I tell you, for Jesus. It's awesome. The blood of Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength is Lord from death. Today it will never lose its power. Yes, the blood of Jesus shed for me. That gives me strength From day to day It will never lose Its power It reaches to the highest the lowest valley is the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power the highest mountain yes here in Colorado and it flows to the lowest valley in the Philippines yeah the blood that gives me strength from day to
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Pastor Atisi wants to sing this song, and this is our theme song during our crusade. And I know your pastors love this song. The heavens declare your glory. The nations bow before thee, and in this place let your praise arise. The nations cease for Christ. The heavens declare your glory. The nations bow before thee, and in this place let your praise arise. The nations is for Christ. Rain, rain, Lord Jesus, in our is for Christ. <coughs> Praise the name of Jesus. You may all be seated, please. And I, brethren, when I came to you, and when we came to you, we did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For we determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We were with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And our speech and our preaching 
were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Can we give the Lord a hand clap offering? Hallelujah. 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 God is doing his business in his house. We are in his house and we become the recipients of the goodness of God. God blesses us not because we are good. He blesses us because he is good. Amen. And the longer we linger in the presence of God, the purer, the stronger, and the powerful we become. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is fullness of peace. In his presence is life forevermore. In his presence, there is resurrection power. In his presence, there is everything that we need. I believe and I declare none of us will go out in the room empty. Every one of us will receive that which we desire. How much we understand of him and how much we can contain of him shall be our portion. Don't doubt. Whether you are a new member or a new person in the house, believe it. Receive it. Make transaction today. You may have challenges. You may have needs. Transaction is done in this place. I felt in my spirit and I sense it. This is God's headquarters. When Philippines has U.S. Embassy, in which when we come to the United States, we have to pass through that embassy and have our visa approved. We can never enter in or we be illegal unless we be given our, the visa. And thank God, your nation is very gracious to us. We are given 10 years visa so we can come back anytime. But you, you have this wonderful opportunity. You don't need a visa. Just get your passport and you can enter in to the Philippines. How do you like to go back to the Philippines? And I would encourage you and challenge you. Those who have not stepped into that land, this is your time. This is your season. Because I believe that the harvest, the greatest harvest... That is happening on the face of the earth. Is now opened. And the nations are responding. To that message. Of the word of God. We felt so humbled. By the presence of your pastors. In our nation. And in our city. We met them in. 2015 in Israel. When we knew. That they've been coming to the Philippines. In Davao City with which our president of the nation resides. I said, you brought a fulfillment of that prophecy. Thank you for coming to that place. When we had our conference, one time conference in Davao City, with some of the American ladies, I received a letter from the embassy, forbid our people to come to that place. Because of terrorism and kidnappings and all sorts of challenges in Mindanao. Then I called one of the ladies. I received this letter. And I want to be fair with you. I read to them the letter. And they said, whether or not we live or die, we are coming. We can die anyway in any part of the world. And when our time is finished there, don't bring us back home. That's what they said. What a brave 
servants of the Lord. And I said, thank you, Jesus. When you can come to the Philippines with that much challenges, you can go anywhere on earth. In the same manner, when you know how to drive in the Philippines, when you know how to drive in our country, you can drive your car, your motorcycle anywhere on earth. So Philippines, Pastor Dave and Didi, is a training ground. Can you believe that? If you can eat the fish heads in, front, in your platter and take it like you're eating your steak, you can be anywhere in the world. And because of that, our national leaders change our national bird. Before, our national bird is like this tiny hummingbird. Now it has changed to an ego. <laughs> Hummingbirds, chickens eat worms. Eagles eat snakes. How do you like to eat snakes? <laughs> Let's have that eagle spirit. That eagle mentality. So that wherever the Lord sends us. We will have that unction from him. Because of that eagle spirit that is in us. They who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. Chicken, eat on what is left on the ground. Eagles, eat what is fresh in the jungle. And their eyes can see even the 150 feet deep on the water just to get their prey. I sense that this house is given that eagle spirit, that eagle's eyes. I see that. In that is why resources is not an issue in this place. I am seeing thousands and millions coming into this house. Korama Shandarala Babahaya. Deralabo Shandai. I am seeing different currencies, not only dollar, different currencies shall be brought in this house because God has mandated you to go to the nations. And I am encouraging and challenging everyone, don't allow yourself to be left behind in this mandate. I have this strong sensing in my heart. And I cannot wait till the end of this message. May I ask our dear pastors to please come up here. Yes. Our dear pastors. As God is sending them to the nations. And the church. By the Holy Spirit. Is releasing them to the nations. And the leaders put the best offerings that you can bring to their feet because the nations are before them. You cannot afford to let them go below the minimum. This is the time for them to go with every maximum capacity because the nations are before them. The Lord will bring them. To kings and governors and presidents. I felt so humbled releasing this word. But the Holy Spirit said release that. In 1986, a woman came to our city. Knowing nothing about us. And she releases us. That word. 
that we will be standing before leaders, government officials, and kings and leaders, whether political, economic, or whatever position they may be. And the Lord just spoke to my heart right now and saying, These are my apostles to the nations. And the Lord is saying to some of you, You have extra houses, extra cars, things that are not necessary to you. Release that and put the resources in the feet of these apostles because they mean business with the Father. The least will become the greatest when you put it in the Master's hand. If God can use the staff in the hand of Moses, He can use the servants of God in the hand of Jesus. They are a demonstration of the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. I just read a scripture. We don't come to you in the wisdom of men, but in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. This church is a showcase of heaven. You are not bound by time, by the clock on earth, but you follow the unction of the Holy Ghost. That's why God is so, dis is so delighted in you. And he has, is so delighted in releasing. Pastors, I am seeing hundreds and thousands and millions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, this is the time. As we were seeing breakthrough, there is a breakthrough of the resources. Inheritance that you have not received for many years, you will have it. Take note, 2017 is a time of your resources and breakthrough. If for this reason, the Lord has brought us in this place, so be it, Lord. So be it. Two years ago, in Indianapolis, the president of Aglo International encouraged us to give. Give the best that you can give. Me and my husband agreed to give with what we have. That was our last money during that conference. And we were desiring for a truck to go to the hinterlands of the Philippines. Not even the, the brand new. And we said, Lord, we put this in the basket for the truck in the Philippines. Before we even return to the Philippines, listen to this, listen. One lady, just an ordinary time of having tea and coffee. She asked us, what is it that you really need in the country? And my husband said, we desire to buy a second hand truck for the mountains, for the hinterlands. And he said, why do you care for second hand? Can God not give you a brand new? Listen, listen. And she said, the Lord prompted me to buy you a brand new truck. You know what? <clears throat> that brand new truck was laid hands by lamb at our mall. I said, Lord, this is what I want. But sometimes due to the traditional thinking of the incapacity, we would settle for the second hand. And the Lord said, no, you deserve the best. You deserve the brand new. Deuteronomy 11 says, I will multiply you a thousand times. From that $100 bill that we put at the apostles' feet, we receive more than a million pesos. We cannot limit God. Yeah, and pastors, there is more. There is more. You will overflow with the blessings. We remembered before you left, you left us an amount. And you said, do whatever you want. And we bought an air-conditioned unit. The money that you gave. Now we have an air-conditioned unit at the center. Thank you. So... We receive this. 
in the name of the Lord. And now we plant it in the Philippines. And we plant this now to the apostles, to the nations. <laughs> Multiply, multiplication in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Increase of lands. Expansion of your business. Influence of your connections shall be your portion. Children raised as godly, men and women, families be restored in the name of Jesus. Good jobs and promotion shall be your portion. Before this year ends, it shall be yours. It shall be yours. No bankruptcy. No more lack. No more. Healings in our bodies. Oh, You know, it is also true that what we are hearing and what we are seeing around the world today may move us at times, only at times. Why? Bef because fear has become an epidemic in the nations of the world. With the threats of nuclear weapons, with the threats of wars, hurricanes right before our eyes, earthquakes, broken marriages, Fallen moral standards and heads full of knowledge, but with restless hearts. How can we stand? We are bombarded with all of these things, especially if we are attuned with the news. Many want the presence of God, but not many want to be planted in the presence of God. When we are planted in the very presence of God, wherever we go, we carry that presence. We carry his passion. Wherever we sit, the person next to you will be impacted by the very presence that is in you. Even if you don't have to say anything, They'll be so confronted by and convicted by what you carry in your heart. As I've said, the past nights that we were here, one man who obeys the Most High God is already a majority. When this church decided to obey the Father, you are a majority. And the angels of God is standing before you. Let me read another scripture for today in 2 Kings chapter 7. Verses 1 up to the verse I would like to end. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. And so an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and asked, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, 
could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. I must tell you this. There are unbelieving believers even in the church. There are unbelieving believers in the body of Christ. We would see them rejoicing, dancing, but when the challenges come, they cannot stand. Listen to this. There were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we also die. Now, therefore, listen the word, now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall leave them. And if they kill us, then we shall only die. <laughs> and they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come into the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Woohoo! <laughs> For the Lord, six, this is so important. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and they left the camp intact. Their tents, horses, donkeys, and they fled for their lives. God can turn hopeless situation around. When the doctor says, you have only a month to live, God can turn that hopeless situation around. When the company boss would say, you only have this month to work, and you are fired, God can turn hopeless situation around. Whatever the situation and the circumstances there be, God can turn the situation for his glory and for his purpose. These four men were already disregarded. They were at the corner of the gate, waiting for mercy, begging for food. And they said, well, what shall we do? We are still breathing. Are you breathing here? <laughs> if we will continue to stay here, we will die. You know what? There's food at the Syrian camp. Why don't we go? We will die anyway. At least we're full. <laughs> at least. We know that we are dying because of starvation. At least our stomach is full. And so, when they decided, four of them, we have four corners in this sanctuary. There is a need outside. You may not have seen them all, but God saw the situation of the earth. We may not be the most or the famous church in the place. But God can use an insignificant people to bring honor and glory to his name. So these four men decided, okay, if two of you shall agree on anything, it shall be done. How much more if there are four or twelve or twenty? Who will go to the nations? You have so much power in you. So these four men, despite what they've been suffering, despite their hunger, despite their need, despite that they are isolated in the place, decided to step up in faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. For God to create miracles in every situation 
and in our lives. These four men, every step that they took, a step of faith, a step of courage, fearless steps were taken by them until they reached the entrance of the camp. They were noticing that nobody moved in the camp. They noticed that the camp was intact. They tried to enter, sneak in, open the tent, or oh, here. Nobody went to another place. Nobody was here. There was food. There were clothings. There were everything. Not one of the Syrian army was there. They started eating. Went through many camps. And nobody was there. When we step out in faith, God will do his work. The Bible says, God has caused the Syrians to hear the step of the foreman. And the Syrian army heard the step like chariots. How is that? And they were so afraid. They were so afraid that they ran for their lives. The Bible says they ran for their lives, leaving everything intact. Wow. You see, sometimes we limit God, or many times, because of our own problems and personal issues and struggles. When Brother Jerry or Gary Jerry shared about that. And the Holy Spirit said to me, that's it. No more struggle. No more struggling of the mind or the emotions. Because I have set this place as your complete freedom. So that the nations are open before you. As you sing, as you play every, every note, every key that you will put your fingers onto will create heaven to respond and will cause people's lives to be delivered, to be healed, to be restored because he's doing that in your lives. And I declare that is released in both of you as you go to the nations. God is in the house. God is in the house. This is his house. He's releasing you, his purpose and his strategy today because you have responded to the call of heaven to worship, to give glory. No flesh, glory in his presence, but you gave it all. You were not bound by the program or the agenda of the house, but you obey as the Holy Spirit prompted you. Today, I believe, is the day of breakthrough. A breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough that you have never experienced before. And these four lepers were full. They were filled with everything. They put on the, the garments, the clothes, or I don't know what else. And they said, you know, we have so much. But they remembered the brethren. Outside the camp, people are hungry. What we are doing is not good. So let's bring the news. Can you relate? Bring the news to the king that there's so much supply in the camp. There is so much supply in the hands of God. And they reported this to the king. And they said, we were there with our eyes, with our hands. Look at our body. They no longer consider themselves as lepers. We bring you this good news. And you know, one of the officers, no way, no way. He's part of the administration, but he does not believe. Just like what the prophet said, you will see it, but you will not taste the goodness. If we believe God and what he's releasing and doing today in this house. I know you have much wonderful services, but this moment is very significant. Because there is that Kairos time in the presence of God. 
Spiritual timing is the key to spiritual harvest. There is the key that God is giving us. Our brother Bruce, he said, you brought the rain here. I said, yes, Lord, thank you. The rain of blessings. Thank God it's not hurricane. We brought the rain because God is releasing something in this place. I said, God, so be it according to your word. And as the king commanded to bring, send people to get all the goods, that man who despised the four lepers, men trampled him until he died. So that there was so much supply. When people ran to the camp, of course, they saw nobody. Where were the Syrian armies? They were hiding themselves because they heard the chariots and the soldiers, you know, the trumpet, the sound on foot of the, of the many armies they heard from the ground. Our prayers on the ground, our worship on the ground, what we do, our planting on the ground is recorded in heaven. It is recorded in heaven so that God will respond according to the accuracy of our heart. We need to be accurate in our relationship with him. God is wanting to use us. There are three types of people in the house of God. There's what we call the flowers who are plastics. It can be decorated, but there's no smell. There is beauty, but no life. No fragrance in it. The second type of people in the house is what we call the potted plants. These are live plants. And they can be planted on the pot, but they have many limitations. Put more water on it, they will die. Bring it out to the sunlight, they will die. But there are all those who are planted in the house. And those that are planted in the house of God will flourish in the courts of the God. Are we the planting of the Lord? Are we the potted plant? Or are we the decorated plant? I would prefer to be the planting of the Lord. I would prefer to be the planting of the Lord. Because when we are the planting of the Lord, those that will come under the shadow of our tree, they will live. They will have life, for life begets life. Today, I'm releasing this to all of us by the Spirit of God. There's life, there's healing, there's resources, there's provision, there's restoration. Every bit that we need is provided by heaven. Because God will showcase gateway on Mount Zion. That this Mount Zion is God's habitation on earth. God habitates in this place. Amen. Amen. Wow. So be it. So be it. Thank you, pastors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, um, I think a person, if a person goes back and begins to review what the things that the Lord has been saying today to us, things that he is going to do in us and he's going to do through us. Just, just one word can change our lives forever. And all these words that they decreed over us today, over us, over the house, over the body of Christ, and then we carry it out into the world and carry it over to those others, um, that's the way God designed it. Fresh from the Philippines. It is the word of the Lord today. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the deep planning in the house of the Lord. As you have planted us deep in the Lord's soil that is so fertile and the things that you're doing in this hour as you are taking us and you are showing us things as we have never seen, as you've never revealed, and you are doing things as you've never revealed and never done. Lord, I think so often when we go to the Philippines, the crusades that we go on, of the multiple harvests that come 
because we step out of our comfort zone and we go and we reach out to care and to express your love, your love through us to others. Lord, you do not give us gifts to just be concealed and inside of us. But you give us the things you give us to release them, to help others. Jesus, I think about you and the kindness that you expressed, that you took on those, that scourging and all the things, as Eric mentioned earlier, the scourging of your body for us. The things of sacrifice you made for us to come from heaven in this hellhole. Wow. You really do love us. In the midst of all these things, we are your light. And we are your carriers of your glory. And we are the demonstration of your power. Let it be so as we would live our lives. Thank you for stirring us and awaking us as you are causing us, as the harvest is in, in, the, in right there in for the harvesting. It's right there ready, prepared for this hour. Thank you for these words that we would be unlike the servant of the king, but full of doubt and unbelief. But, Lord, we would be messengers of faith. Amen. We would be the, the re recipients of your glory and then release that out of us in that place in this hour as we have never, ever experienced. Thank you for taking and bringing our Filipino friends, our family, our Filipino family here to remind us and to stir even the new things that you're doing in this hour. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done inside of our hearts. Seal these things in us. And, Lord, we thank you now, Lord, as you're gonna, we're going to see law, the very things of your treasures that you've imparted, even in the prophetic words and worship, the things that you've spoken and the things that you've done. Lord, I thank you. We are not going to be the same anymore. As we stand up out of our seats today, we came in one way, and we are going out a brand new way. We are going to be walking in the fullness of the dunamis, in the power, and the demonstration of your power, Lord, as you imparted in us. Just raise your hand right there. Lord, as Pastor Lem and Pastor Tessie were even the songs that they were singing, the things that you were doing inside of us. In preparation for what's to come as we walk out these doors that our witness and our lives will never be the same no matter where we're at on our job knowing that our jobs are a full-time ministry right there. We are operating in full-time ministry right there in the fullness of the blessings that you have established. Lord, transform the remaining areas of our lives forever and ever, as long as we're here on this earth, you are transforming us and we are going from one degree of glory to the next, to the next. And we thank you what you birthed in us today and what you stirred in us today. Lord, I decree that each one in this house and those that watch by live stream those that are a part of this body and those that are a part of the body of Christ that will hear this very message throughout the world, that we will go to the nations and we will be obedient to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And there are no exceptions. I do not remember seeing any exceptions in there with your name written in there. Lord, you said to go into all the world. You're going to provide. Because, Lord, as you hit that million-dollar mission budget, so there will never, we do call it, there will never, ever be a lack that we could go to the, we will always be able to go to the nations. 
Wherever you call us, Lord, and no one will lack. Lord, if you have golden streets, I suppose you could handle that, can't you? <laughs> and there's a lot of long highways, streets in heaven. Lord, we thank you now. As Lord, as we sow back in to Pastor Lamb and Pastor Tessie, truly as apostles to the world, as we come uh, and take these baskets, let's just, uh, there's some that don't like to come forward. Uh, if you could, ushers, come grab these baskets. And there's some, still some folks that want to sow in uh, to the ministry. And uh, yeah, we speak multiplication. All these funds are going to them, uh, the, what the Lord has. Thank you, ushers. Thank you, sound people. Thank you, camera people. Thank you, uh, worship team. Thank you for all of all the greeters and oh, just so many, so many of you. We just thank you. We can't do this. It's it's a body. But Lord, we thank you for blessing this beyond measure, showing us if you want if we already sowed and you want us to sow some more, we'll do that too, because they are going out of here blessed beyond measure. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me tell you a quick story. You know how we talk about whenever we go to the nations, we, uh, we are always servants of the Lord. Whatever they ask us to do, we do it. Well, here we are over in the Philippines. And Pastor Lem says to me, some of you might have heard this story, some of you haven't. He says, brother, he says, I want you to preach at this funeral tomorrow. And the servant that we are, you know, the servants that we are, I thought that was, that's an odd request, my brother. <laughs> but I would be glad to do it. So, <laughs> so we go to the church, and here's people that are, you know, they just, this, this, this particular uh, was a mom to some of the people in the fellowship of the church, one of the churches they have. And we began, we just, he, he opens it up. And then all of a sudden, we just moved, let the Holy Spirit come in. And this is really cool. You know, at funerals, people are always ready. Most of the time, they're ready because their hearts are really tender toward the Lord. So we had an altar call, or we had a salvation call. And in that salvation call, there were people that got saved in that funeral. <laughs> so... Hey, man, there's a harvest everywhere. How many of you, how many of you got stirred? First of all, how many got stirred in a different way to begin to, begin to declare things of the Lord wherever you're at? How many? Just raise your hand right there. How many of you got, got stirred to begin uh, to give in a brand new way of your lives in other ways? How many of you? Very good. How many of you didn't get stirred at all? You can raise your hand, too, because we'll, let, we'll, we'll pray for you. <laughs> but today, I would just really exhort all of you to begin to move in what God's called you to do. In a way, step out on the water. What was, what was Pastor Tessie, what was it? Faith is the currency. How many did you get that? Yeah, wasn't that powerful? That was powerful. I mean, all these little, all these little, these little cool little sayings. All right, let's pray, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, oh, did we pray already? Okay. Thank you so kind, Brother Mark. There's no condemnation. We are a house of prayer. All right. Let's have it from a different source. Go ahead, Pastor Lisa. <laughs> Four barrels. Let it out. Let's go. Oh, yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on three, you're going to yell, I receive it. Yeah. All right? One, two, three. I receive it. And as you all know, heaven heard that, and you are now in the limelight of the Holy Ghost, and he will not relent 
until he fulfills everything that you just received in your life. So, Father, we do thank you. We receive it. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, do not relent. 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 relent. In this place, in our lives, in our hearts, do what you have to do to bring us to that place of everything we just received. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, oh, Lord. Hey, uh, how about we pray again, huh? How about, how, how about you, Pastor Duane? Why don't you come up here? Because these people want to pray. This is good. Give us all uh, both barrels again. Barrel number one. Father, we thank you for this word today. We pray, oh God, for the next week that we have opportunities to share it. In Jesus' name, amen. So when someone asks you what was your weekend like, what did you do, you can tell them what you heard. Amen. Barrel number two. I feel a roar. Thank you. <laughs> you can join me if you like. Woo! We have, we have a word from Beverly that came in over Facebook. Yeah, I just think this is really powerful for everyone to hear. She said, as the pastors are released to the nations, we, the congregation, must remain faithful to God and our commitment to Gateway on Mount Zion submitted to the leadership, whether the pastors are physically there or not. That is exactly right. Okay. All right. Anybody want to pray again? No. (laughs) Get out of here. Go home. Go be a blessing. Tell somebody about the Lord.